You are listening to the Auditory Entertainment's production of Zero Hour by Ray Bradbury from the radio drama series Suspense. Performed by Miranda Johnson and Ryan Johnson. If you enjoy this performance, please subscribe, leave a comment, or a review. Oh boy, this is fun! What a game. Such excitement they hadn't known in years. <laughs> Mink talked earnestly to someone near the rose bush, though no one was yeah, there. Thanks. Yeah, great. Cool. Then the two little girls shouting, laughing at each other. Such fun, such joy. Mink ran into the house, all dirt and sweat. For her few years, she was loud and strong and definite. Her mother, Miss Morris, peeling vegetables at the sink, watched with amusement as her daughter threw into a sack old pots and tools and things that were relegated to child play. Oh, my goodness, Mink. What's going on? Oh, the most exciting game ever. Just ever, Mom. Oh? Is it all right if I take these, Mom? Just don't dent them and don't get them dirty. Thanks, Mom. We won't. Bye. All right, dear. Oh, by the way, what's the name of the game that you're playing? Invasion. Invasion? Invasion. And in the garden, now concentrating seriously. Mink, with an assortment of pots, pans, and wrenches, forks, spoons, and her friend Anna, a little younger, tongue in teeth, taking notes on a pad. This, this, and this. What's it say next? Wait a minute, Mink. Well, hurry up. Four, nine, seven, eight. And B and X. Four, nine, seven, A, and B and X. A fork and a string and a hex, hex, hexagonal. A fork, a string, and a hexagonal. What do we need next, Mr. Drill? And then Mink talking to the rosebush again, and to her own satisfaction at least, receiving some kind of answer which she relays to Anna. Triangle? How do you spell it? Oh, any old way. Doesn't matter. Now write beam. I haven't got triangle yet. Well, hurry! Zero hours by five o'clock. We haven't got all day. Then time out from invasion for lunch. Mink bolted down the soup and coincidentally crammed a sandwich into her mouth. Now you slow down, Mink. Whatever's waiting will wait a few minutes longer. But I can't. Drill's waiting for me. Drill? That's a peculiar name. Is he a new boy in the neighborhood, dear? He's new, all right. Well, I don't think I've ever even seen him. Which one is Drill? Oh, he's just around. You'll make fun. Everybody makes fun. All the kids do. Well, I don't think that's very nice. Is Drill shy? Yes, in a way. I don't know. I gotta go now, Mom, if we're gonna have the invasion. Now you finish your milk, miss. Who's invading what? Martians! Invading Earth! From up there! Oh, I see. And, um, Drill's a Martian? I think so. He's had a very hard time getting here. I should imagine. They couldn't figure out a way to attack Earth. How to get in or something. And Drill says... They have to do it by surprise, and even 
Get help from your enemy. Oh, a fifth column, huh? Uh-huh. And all this time, they haven't been able to figure out how to attack. Until one day, they thought of children. Well, that was bright of them. And they thought of how grown-ups are always so busy that they never look under rose bushes or on lawns. That's where Drill is now? Under the rose bush? Uh-huh. With all his friends, too. And there's something about kids under 11 with imagination. It's really funny to hear Drill talk. <laughs> you better run along now if you want to have your invasion before dark. And bath tonight. School tomorrow. Drill says I won't have to take any more baths. Oh, he does, does he? And we can stay up until 10 o'clock. Well, your friend, Mr. Drill, had better mind his P's and Q's, or I'm going to call up his mother and... That's just it. Drill says you're dangerous because you don't believe in Martians. You think Drill is a kid. Well, he's not. And they're going to let us run the world when they get in. All us kids. I might even be a queen. Well, that's nice, dear. Now run along. Mom? What is it, dear? Mom, when the invasion comes, we'll have to get rid of you and Daddy. But I'll be sure it won't hurt very much. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Hello? Hello, Mary. How are things in New York? Oh, Helen, how nice. Are you in town? Oh, no. I'm in Danbury. I was just thinking of you and thought I'd call. But it's long distance. You shouldn't have. I can afford three minutes. How's Henry? Fine. And Bill? Oh, just fine. What about Mink? Wonderful. Noisier than ever. And she's got a... a new game now. It's taken the place of Hopscotch. Invasion. Is she playing that too? Well, yes. Are yours? Same thing. Some kind of geometric jacks, I suppose. You know, all the kids their age are playing it up here. Tammy's got a crush on some guy named Drill. I think that's what it is. Oh? It must be a new password. Mink likes him, too. Wow, I didn't know it had gotten to New York. Word of mouth, I suppose. You know, kids. Funniest thing. I got a letter from my sister in Boston. She says her kids are playing it, too. It's just sweeping the country. Well, I... I wonder where they learned it. Ah, uh, don't ask me. All I know is what Tammy tells me at lunch. Zero hours at five o'clock. When? Today. That's when the invasion is going to be. Oh, these kids and their imaginations. Oh, yeah, so how's everything else going in life? And then they talked a little more. Oh, everything's fine. Things are going all right, you know. Schoolgirl friends. Oh, that's wonderful. Casual yeah. woman talk. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. She's doing Well, Miss Morris well. was thoughtful. Yeah, there's this beautiful new dress. She was thinking of other things. Did you see it? Of adults. Of children oh, with imagination. Yeah, I did see it. It is gorgeous. Rose I bushes. One. Dimensions. It was just so beautiful. She thought about how much she had forgotten about being a child. And she wondered about Mink. That's nice. And all the kids who were at that moment playing invasion I'm so glad you called give my love to Henry and a kiss for mink I will and to Bill and the kids thanks goodbye goodbye an hour drowsed by it was three o'clock there was an occasional hum inside the coolness of the house as a car passed outside the street was lined with good, green, and peaceful trees. And all across the city, in other gardens, in other places, 
children under eleven were excitedly playing a game, talking to rose bushes and grass lawns, trees, shrubs, even children in apartment houses, high in the air, conferring with potted plants, cactus and ivy. Mrs. Morris finished her housework and went to the kitchen. Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Mom. Can't I have a glass of water? Of course. I'll get it. Pi R squared, point seven, over 56 to the seventh degree, X T7. What, dear? Oh, nothing, Mom. Here you are. Thanks. How are things going? Huh? The, uh, invasion. Oh, yeah, that. Yes, that. Almost finished. Everything's going all right. Drill says we should be ready on time. Five o'clock? That's right. How'd you know? Helen called me from Danbury. She says that, uh, Timmy's playing it, too. Cool. I guess all the kids are playing it, aren't they? No, not all of them. Not guys like Jimmy Wood and Bob Wilson. They're growing up, and they make fun of us. They're worse than parents. They just won't believe in drill. They're so smart just because they're growing up. You'd think they'd know better. They were little only a couple of years ago. We'll get rid of them first. Drill says it's okay to kill them first. Now, Mink, I don't like that kind of talk. Do you hear me? I don't like it at all. Oh, Mom. Now, I mean it. You keep on that way and there'll be no more playing. You'll have to tell Anna to go home and you'll stay inside until bedtime. I'm sorry. Well, I should think so. Thanks for the water, Mom. Mink? Yes, Mom? What did those, uh, numbers mean? What numbers? Those numbers you were saying to yourself before. Oh, that! They're the things we have to do to get Drill and his friends out. That's all. Look, dear, why don't you and Anna go down to the drugstore and get some ice cream? You don't even have to use your allowance. I'll pay for it. Haven't got time, Mom. Thanks. Well, I'd never believe I'd hear you say that. I gotta go now, Mom. Wait a minute. Mink, I want you to tell me the truth. What is this invasion silliness? It isn't silly! It's just a game. Mom, we're just playing invasion. Excuse me. I gotta get back now. I'll see you later. It was a game called Invasion. Miss Morris's little girl, Mink, was playing it. So was Mink's friend, Anna, and all the other children under eleven. And zero hour was to be at five o'clock. Miss Morris was disturbed. She wasn't sure why, but there was something. Something about parents shutting ears and eyes to what was happening. And because she was disturbed, she did something she didn't usually do. She called her husband at the office. Hello, dear. Oh, hello, Henry. I'm sorry to bother you, but Miss Maxton said you weren't busy. Oh, not too much. I should be able to get home early today. Is everything all right? Yes. You all right? I... I'm fine. Mink? Oh, she's... Uh, Henry. What? Oh, uh, nothing. I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. That's all. Listen, are you sure you're all right? Oh, yes. Mink's been getting on your nerves? N uh, not really. Well, you tell her to behave, or when I get home, she and I are going to have a talk. As a matter of fact, she's been a little fresh lately, and I don't think it's good. Well, she's playing outside. She's fine. Honey, is something wrong? Why, no, no, I told you. 
I was just thinking about you and wanted to talk. That's all. You go back to your work, dear. I'll see you soon. What time do you think you'll be home? Uh, about five. Maybe a little earlier. Five. Oh. Hey, what's wrong? Well, I... I was just thinking... Mm, nothing, really. Just Mink and you and me. Goodbye, dear. You're okay, aren't you? Yes, I'm fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Another hour passed and it was half past four. The day began to wane. The sun lowered in the peaceful blue sky. Shadows lengthened on the green lawn. Outside, it was quiet. The two little girls, more intent than ever upon their endless movement of design and pattern with the implements before them. Miss Morris watched from the window and she had never known Mink to have such powers of concentration. She sat drinking a cup of coffee turning over her thoughts. Children, children, children. Love and hate side by side. Sometimes children love you and hate you all in half a second. Strange, children. Do they ever forget or forgive the whippings and the harsh, strict words of command? I wonder. I wonder. How can you forget or forgive those over and above you? Those tall, silly dictators. Those parents. Mom! Oh! What, what is it, dear? Have we got a piece of lead pipe and a hammer? Well, I don't know. There might be in the garage. What do you want them for? We just need them. Well... If you tell me what they're for, maybe I can... I'll get them. Thanks, Mom. Is... is something wrong? Drill stuck halfway. And if we can get him all the way through, it'd be easier. Then all the others can come through after him. Well, can I help? Thanks, Mom. I can fix it. You better get through, Mink. I want you to take your bath before your father comes home. Oh! All right. Now he's coming home early. And Mink. Mink! Mink had disappeared behind the shrubs, and Miss Morris knew it was ridiculous to make an issue of it. Besides, what was the issue? Invasion? Drill? Zero hour? Unaccountably, a cool breeze came up, and although normally, for that time of year, it would have been a relief. Miss Morris felt a chill. She closed the window. Time passed. A curious, waiting silence came upon the street. Then from the living room, Miss Morris heard. Five o'clock. Zero hour. It had come. And now... It had gone. But was the clock right? Miss Morris, knowing how foolish it was, went to the phone and dialed. Ugh, oh, this is silly. I know, this is so silly. <sighs> when you hear the tone, the time will be exactly 4.54 and 20 seconds. 4.54 and 20 seconds, and Miss Morris knew it wasn't as silly as she thought. Because... It wasn't five o'clock yet. Not zero hour yet. Then the car drove up into the driveway. Hi, Mink. How's it going? Hi, Anna. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Mr. Morris. Got a kiss for your old man? Haven't got time now, Daddy. Well, that's a nice thing. What are you doing? We're playing Invasion. Sounds fun. Is your mother in the house? Uh-huh. Okay. Be good. I will. Zero hour in a few minutes, Daddy. <laughs> All right. I'll be ready. Miss Morris heard him chuckle, then his steps up the walk to the front door. Mary! 
I'm in the living room, dear. I... Our daughter didn't have time for a kiss. How about you? <laughs> oh, hard day? Eh, not particularly. Would you like a cocktail? You read my mind. Martini? Perfect. Anything exciting happened today? No. Oh, Helen called from Danbury. I told her she was crazy, but she felt like calling. Crazy, huh? Like you calling me this afternoon. What was that all about? Well, I told you. I just wanted to. Hmm. Hey, um, what's this new game the kids are playing? Invasion? That's a nice, depressing thought. Is she all right? You know, come to think of it, she looked kind of funny. She's all right. What's the time, Henry? A couple minutes after five. Why? No, no. The clock's wrong. By your watch. Oh, I've got two minutes to. I'm probably slow. You got something on the stove? No. I... I just wondered. Honey, hey, look at me. What's the matter? Nothing. Really. Now... Really. Mink's been up to something. No, of course not. Then what? I guess I'm just a little tired, a little upset, that's all. You want to go out for dinner? Oh, no. I've got a... I've got a steak here. I'll tell you what. I'll barbecue. How's that sound? Oh, fine. What was that? What? Well, I, I thought I heard something. Well, I didn't. I must have been imagining it. Hey, you're jumpy. Why don't you have a drink? It'll do you good. No. No, I don't want one. W what's the time? Mary, what is this? Now I mean it. Something's wrong and I want to know. <laughs> it's so silly. So silly. I I'm, I'm on edge. That's M all. Mary. I am. I don't like this. That kid's done something, hasn't she? I'm going to get her in here. No, no. Henry, please don't. She hasn't. She's done nothing at all. I just... What's that? I... I... don't know. Those kids don't have anything dangerous out there, do they? I notice a lot of junk lying around. I... I... I, I thought it was a game. She wouldn't have done it herself. They... they made her do it. What the hell? Maybe you better go out and tell her to stop playing. Right now. It's after five. You tell Mink to put the invasion off until tomorrow. It's coming from outside. What are they up to? I better go take a look. Mink? Mink? Oh my god! Oh no! Bombs! Bombs! They're bombing! Oh, we have to protect ourselves! Get, get the gun! It's in the attic! It's upstairs! That's where it is. Mary! Mary! It's not up there! He ran after her, confused. More than a little frightened. She seemed to know something. In the attic! In the attic! Her mind had worked that quickly. Any excuse to get him away from the outside. To get him upstairs to the attic in time. And outside, there were more explosions. And they could hear the children screaming with delight. It's not in the attic! Mink's outside! Mink's out there! What's the matter with you? No! No! I'll, I'll show you, okay? Hurry! Get inside, quick! Oh no! Oh god! Oh gosh! Oh. oh! Now we're safe. Until the night. Are you crazy? Why'd you throw the key away? Shh! Shh! Maybe we can sneak out later. Maybe we can escape. For heaven's sakes, the, the key! 
kids out there. Do you want her to get killed? Oh, no. No, no. You don't know. You don't understand. We've got to stay here. We've got to. It's horrible. We've got to. You've got to stay here with me. At this point, I don't know how the hell we can get out. Where's the light? Be quiet, please. Be quiet. They'll hear us. They'll find us. Henry, please. Well, who's going to answer the phone? <laughs> There's that noise again. It's in the house. Mary, what is this? What's happening? You know, now answer me. <laughs> stop it, Mary, stop it. Somebody's downstairs. Who's down there? Who? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, hush, hush now. Shh, please be quiet. They might go away. Between his wife's terror and the electric humming from below, Mr. Morris felt a great fear. They trembled together in silence in the attic. Then they heard steps coming up the stairs. And a voice. Mommy? Daddy? Where are you? And a queer, cold light became visible under the door crack. The strange odor and the alien sound of eagerness in Mink's voice was almost more than they could bear. Each wanted to scream. Mommy! Daddy! And another sound. And the attic lock melted. Oh, 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 God, oh no! Mink, with bright little eyes and tousled hair, peered inside. And behind her, tall, wavering blue shadows. Frightful shadows. Peekaboo! This concludes Zero Hour by Ray Bradbury. If you have a suggested story in the public domain or an original work you wish to hear performed, please leave a comment or contact us at auditoryentertainments at gmail.com. You can also visit us at auditoryentertainments.com. Thank you for listening, and have a happy Halloween.